are the cars. Okay, guys, the number five is the typical owner of a Nissan GTR is either one, a rich kid, or two, a rich guy, older gentleman. Okay. And when I'm talking, I'm not talking. I'm not talking about stupid rich, but I'm talking about just a regular guy that makes over one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Okay. Or, or you know, the uh, the rich kid who's his dad make over one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Uh, and those are the typical Nissan GTR owners. So when the Nissan GTR arrived to the U.S. in 2009, or you know, late 2008, early 2009, you know, these kids were out there, you know, just buying the fucking GTR. You know, 2009, the old everybody wanted GTR. Oh, Godzilla, you know, the old everybody got the fucking GTR. And then I remember back then. Uh, when I was inspiring, you know, I used to see a GTR like, wow, what a what a Pagani Sonda, what a what a what a uh, what, what a uh, Bugatti Veyron, you know. But it's never been it's, it, GTR has never been a, been a supercar. Uh, but guess what, guys? When people like me that that barely make one hundred and twenty thousand a year, you know, barely making, you got you got to stretch your fucking your fucking hours. You got to work double time. You got to work three jobs like I do to make one hundred twenty. Uh, these people were already thinking about oh when the 2012 is gonna come. I got a DBA, I need to get a CBA or whatever, CBA, DBA, CTA, whatever the fuck may be, you know. So, number five, the number five guys is is that the typical owner of the Nissan GTR in a nutshell, it's a rich kid. Okay. Let me tell you, let me tell you the number four. The number four reason why the Nissan GTR is doing so poorly on resale value, guys, is because when that rich kid wanted to upgrade to the Nissan GTR 20, the new one, the new version, because they got fog lights, and, and, and Nissan just gave you a cookie, <clears throat> and he charged you uh, $15,000 more for the car. Now the car is over $100, $110,000. Uh, you went out there with your father, or with your, you own your shed book, and you're like, ah, fuck it, I want, the, I want those fucking lights. <coughs> Excuse me. I want the fucking black edition. It's the same fucking shit, you know? You went out there with your fucking checkbook and you wrote a check, you know, and you took the losses, yeah? Now the dealership is trying to sell your non-desirable GTR to somebody like me. The guy that sees the GTR, wow, with big old eyes, you know, I'm in love with that car, you know? But guess what, guys? I know how much you pay because there's something called Carfax, you know? I know how much the dealer gave you. Gave you. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not a secret. But now I'm trying to I'm trying to decide am I gonna be I got am I gonna be mocked by everybody by telling me that I overpay on that car that this guy just lost a lot of money or am I gonna take the bullet? So people like me went down there and overpay for the fucking car, you know? So you traded in your 2009 GTR that you just paid ninety thousand uh, dollars to the dealer for forty five, and they're selling your car again for eighty thousand. Cause that's how that shit works guys dealers are only making money out of our fucking bags uh and that's the four fucking reason why the number four the fourth reason why our fucking gtrs are so bad when it comes to depreciation because it's dumb stupid people like you number three guys the number the, the third reason why the nissan gtr is doing so bad when it comes to risk of value guys is because facebook fuck Facebook all right guys so as we all know we got we got the wizards we got the uh, the trolls we got the uh, uh, the uh, the stalkers we got uh, just name it guys and we have them and I'm not joking when I'm telling you this guys there's people out there that know about your car more than you know and you just own the and you have your car for four years there's somebody that know your car for five and a half there's somebody out there on Facebook that knew when your car was shipped from Japan or Korea or Tokyo or Mexico to the United States. It's, it's, they're just wizards. I'm telling you. Uh, wizards. Anyway. It is ridiculous, guys. It is ridiculous. It is ridiculous, you know. Uh, and because of that knowledge out there, because of that fucking knowledge... Whenever you sold the car, whenever your car was sold, whenever your something was done to your car, any anytime your car broke down, every everything's little piece and bit, you know what I mean? It started there on fucking Facebook, on Top Talk, on GTR Life, and guess what? People are tracking, people keeping tabs on you. So when you sold your GTR for 
your 2017, when you're trying to sell your 2016 GTR, somebody will be like, oh, Ricky, you're so stupid. Oh, you pay 120, we're gonna give you only 72. What the fuck, you just lost 50,000. That's what the reason why our fucking GTRs are so long. Let me give you two more. Let me give you two more reasons why I have to. I feel. I feel like I, I got to give you two more reasons why the the resale value of the Nissan GTRs is so low, guys. The number. The, the, I'm gonna give you two more. I'm gonna give you two more. Guys, one of the reasons why our GTRs are so so bad in in, in, in depreciation, where they're doing so bad, is because. We got something called the bubble effect, guys. The bubble effect. If you look at right now, the R31, uh, 32s over there, the R33s, the R34s, those fucking shit are going for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Pristine. Man, I've seen that fucking shit. I've been to fucking Korea. What the fuck are you trying to sell me? It is a 20, it's a, it's a 30 year old fucking car. And it looks like, and it's age four, you know? And people are so stupid, fucking stupid. Paying that amount of money for that bullshit cars. I, I'm not gonna say anything more. Then the no, the, the last reason I'm gonna give you why our fucking cars are doing so bad, and you won't believe this shit. You won't fucking believe this shit. It's because us, and I'm including everybody from the stupid trolls to the wizards to the rich guy to me, the guy with three jobs to 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 own a fucking GTR. It's because guys, we're desperate. You know, we're desperate. We know that GTR is the best car there. You know, we know that nobody can. If you drive in a fucking GTR, people with Lambos are fear you. People with Ferraris, they think twice before they they rev their fucking B12. People with 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 with, with all sort of cars, you know, they're looking at you like this motherfucker just pay seventy thousand for this amazing piece of machinery and is about to beat my ass. That's why Porsche 911 has the competition. That's why Corvette zero one, uh zero uh zero one zero sixes uh with C seventy one packets. That's why they are afraid of us guys, but people like you and me because we are desperate We are desperate to have the latest and the greatest on GTR technology And Nissan knows that shit If you look at the 2017 Nissan GTR and Nismo and the 2014 and the 20, 2013 they, No, 2014, they're the fucking same No, 2015, they're the fucking same. They're the fucking same car What what the fucking change? The dash? I did a video about, about it. The fucking new dash uh, the, uh, the, <laughs> It's the same fucking car. The engine and the transmission is the fucking same. And they tell you, oh, it makes 20 more horsepower. Oh, yeah, they fucking put a... Uh, they, 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 uh... <laughs> ah, fuck. We are so dumb, guys. But we love the GTR. So on that note, guys, don't settle, guys. When you go to a dealership and you got you to gotta trade your car for, for a minivan because now you have three kids. Your wife's super hot. And you just got her pregnant again. Uh, and you're trying to buy the, the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Or, or you're trying to buy, uh, I don't know, something like like a, um, GLE 63 or something like that. Or Range Rover. Just don't sell your car for $40,000, you know. Don't sell your car and take another hit, you know. Because dealers are out there to make money on you. If you if you hold tight, when they tell you we're going to give you a 43 and we're going to sell you that, that car for, 90, for, for 95000 and we're going to put... The other fifteen thousand that you went to the car because you got room. Just tell them no, and show them a show them a pre-approval uh, check from your bank, or let them run your credit once so they know. Hey, yeah, you work three jobs like me, or you have money, or your dad has money, and wait for it. That way, you're helping not just yourself, but you're helping others uh, to get the resale value on these fucking cars better. Anyway, guys, this is it for today. Uh, if you have anything to say or any comments to this fucking video, just let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, guys, and fucking share it, guys. Fucking share it. Let's make Ricky Tube 365 uh, great again. Take care, guys. Bye.